14th afternoon edition. We're coming to you a little bit later today because Doug Ford's press conference was moved to 1.30. Right now we're waiting for Doug Ford, obviously, and Christine Elliott, who is the Deputy Premier and also Minister of Health, as well as Rod Phillips, Minister of Finance, and Stephen Lecce, who's the Minister of Education. But before we do that, we're going to head over to Brother Daniel. What's going on, buddy? Middle of September. Already. We're going to take a look at our live view, which is sponsored by wirelesscom.ca. Check out their website for all the services they have to offer. There's a boat cruise in there in the river and City Hall. And uh, we see the sun is out today. And we are going to probably see that for the majority of the day. We're going to see a low of 7 tonight and things will uh, start to cloud over by the morning. But enjoy this day, even though it's not super hot. It's still... Uh, still sunny out so get out and enjoy it just bundle up for your walk this is your expected highs for the northeast region today 15 in thunder bay 13 in wawa timmins 15 in sault ste marie here as well as in elliott lake and Sun sorry about that daniel uh, but we got to head over to doug ford what, here we go this pandemic has put us to the test it's tested us as a government and as a people and all through the summer we work together to get the economy going again, to open the province back up, to get ready for the start of school. We work together to keep the case count down, and we've had tremendous success. Together, we kept the numbers down all summer. But we all know that a second wave of this virus is coming. We see it all over the world. This virus is still amongst us and it's spreading. So the only question left is how bad will the second wave be? And the answer to that question is up to all of us. It's up to you, it's up to the 14 and a half million people in this province. We've shown what we can achieve when we work together. Together, we got those numbers down. We flattened the curve on the first wave, but we're not out of the woods. And today's numbers, they're, they're a cause for concern for all of us. And let me be crystal clear, every option is on the table. We will take every step necessary, including further shutdowns. In the second wave of COVID-19, it's a scenario that we have been preparing for all summer long. And today, we're in much better shape. When it comes to testing, we have dozens of companies in Ontario manufacturing PPE, we have invested billions of dollars to expand capacity in our healthcare system. We have not been waiting for things to get worse before we take action. We've been working around the clock for months, getting ready for the second wave. And that's why we return to the House today with clear plans to protect and support Ontario. My friends, our legislative priorities have never been more clear. And you will hear from us shortly. As we roll out plans to keep Ontario safe, you will hear more from us in the coming days about how we will continue to support families and our most vulnerable. You will hear from us during this leg legislative session about how we can continue to support our small businesses and our workers. But it's up to all of us. It's up to every person in Ontario to do their part. Follow the public health guidance. My friends, we're all in this together and we will get out of this together. Thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. And I guess before, before I take uh, questions, Ivana, uh, you know, things have been moving rapidly over the last, last uh, few days, almost a week now. Uh, we see the numbers climbing. We had a real productive meeting, conversations, uh, not only about the economy, but uh, COVID with Premier Legault last week, uh, had a very good conversations with their ministers. And on a side note, I know this has nothing to do with uh, COVID, but uh, you know, a few people have called me up and say, hey, I saw you drink a, a beer. You know, that, that was non-alcoholic, but that's here nor there. Um, on, on another uh, note with the prime minister, we, uh, we had a great conversation uh, up in the north. It was a great announcement with the prime minister up there and that's uh, employing a lot of people for the mines. So that was good. We've been working uh, around the clock on the, on the numbers going up. I had a conversation uh, with uh, three regions, uh, myself and, and uh, the health team with uh, Dr. Davila from, from Toronto and what a, what a great job Dr. Davila is doing 
and Dr. Etches in, in uh, Ottawa as well, another fabulous doctor, and Dr. Lowe in, in Peel, kind of three hot spots and, and had a, a very, very good uh, conversation as we're going to continue uh, having those talks with uh, regional health teams across the, the province. So we're, we're ready to uh, take questions. I know it's kind of like the perfect storm, Everyone, uh, everything coming together, school starting, second wave, flu season, economy, uh, but folks, I, I can tell you one thing, we're going to hit some bumps, but we're ready for it. We're still leading North America, and the only reason we're leading North America in the lowest cases is because each and every one of you, and I'm so, so grateful uh, to every person in Ontario, very grateful for all the essential workers, frontline healthcare workers. Uh, we're going to get through this. So I'm, I'm ready to take questions. Okay, we'll go to the first question, please. Your first question comes from Sean Jeffords with the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, Premier. Hi, Sean. I wanted to ask you today about uh, just the, the remarks you made off the top uh, about the increasing numbers the province is seeing. Um, they're yeah. the highest since early June uh, in terms of new daily cases. You said nothing is off the table right now, but I'm wondering what a potential second lockdown could look like. Would it be a regional uh, lockdown or uh, more broad-based across the province? Well, I, I think, and I, before I hand it over to the Minister of Health, uh, we have to look at it at our regions. You know, we were up north, they, they didn't have any cases up there, and we have three hot spots uh, right now, potentially four, and uh, we're, we're confident, the, the, each Chief Medical Officer, including Dr. Williams, we're, we're confident in the fact that if we follow the procedures, because what, what, what we're seeing, and I, I ask this question every single meeting, there were three separate uh, calls, and I asked, where, where are we seeing the cases? And the, the most common answer is social gatherings. It's not the, the bars per se or the restaurants, uh, it's social gatherings. So folks, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you, please just cut out the social gatherings. It's just not worth it because it's, uh, this COVID is, is ramping up again and uh, we just can't have the, the large social gatherings. Uh, we have to uh, make sure that we're very vigilant and uh, we, we don't take our eye off the ball. I, I think not all of us, not everyone, but small percentages are getting lax in the protocols and guidance and thinks every, everything's okay and it's, it's coming back uh, to bite us. So I'll, I'll, I'll pass it over to the Minister of Health. Well, we did quite well with respect to wave one, but wave two is coming. And the most important thing that we all need to continue to do, all 14 and a half million of us, is to please continue to follow the public health guidance. Please continue with the physical distancing or wear a mask where that's not safe, or safe to do so or practical to do so in crowded situations, mass uh, public transit, for example, and other situations. Follow the proper hand hygiene. If you're not feeling well, please don't go out, don't go to work. Make sure that you, uh, if you have symptoms, please go and get tested. But we need to make sure that as we open things up and we don't want to have to shut things down or lock things down again, but it is absolutely essential that people continue to follow these rules, continue to follow the rules with respect to social gatherings, not go to large groups where people are not practicing these, these uh, hygiene measures because that's what's causing COVID-19 to spread. So if we all keep following the work that we've been doing so far, I know it's been a long time, but it's not going to be forever. So please continue to follow those rules and hopefully we'll come out of the second wave just as well as we came out of the first. Follow up. Um, follow up for the Minister Elliott. Yeah. Um, Minister, I'm wondering if you can give us any more details about the, the government's uh, second wave plan, like when it's coming, for instance. And I'm also wondering if um, as part of that plan uh, would deal with the, uh, the testing centers in the province that are outdoors. And we're wondering what will happen with those centers as cold weather approaches. Will they be converted to indoor testing centers? Well, we do have a very robust fall preparedness plan that we will be uh, bringing forward to you in very short order. But I think it's fair to say that the second wave is going to be more complicated and more difficult to deal with than the first wave because we also have flu season approaching. In addition to COVID-19, we also have a reduced capacity in our hospitals because we have a number of people who were in long-term care homes, but because they've had to half their capacity for infection prevention and 
control. They're back in hospital. And we're also working on the thousands of surgeries and other medical procedures that were postponed due to the first wave. So we have taken all of those measures into consideration with our fall plan, which we will be bringing to you, as I said, very shortly. Next question. Your next question comes from Cynthia Mulligan with City News. Please go ahead. Hi, Cynthia. Hello, Premier. Hi. I hope you're well. Um, I'm hanging in there. Over the past few days, uh, the, the wait lines at testing centers have grown exponentially. Yeah. Many people are saying they're, they're, the lineups can be four hours long. One of our cameras at one of the hospitals saw it snaking completely around the back of a, the hospital and then, and then down an alleyway. Why is there such a sudden surge in, in people getting tested? Are they panicking, uh, yeah. waiting for the second wave, or do we not have enough people um, in, in the labs? And do you think that the hours should be extended to deal with this? Yeah, well, a good, great question. Um, I've, I've noticed that myself. So on the on the calls today, uh, and and even before today, uh, we're going to increase the the capacity. I had a good conversation with the deputy uh, minister, uh, as as well a deputy minister. I apologize, a deputy prime minister, uh, early this morning, about seven thirty in the morning. Uh, about the the capacity as well so all provinces not just Ontario we're going to start ramping up for uh, more testing we do have to work with the the private sector uh, as well uh, no matter if it's uh, life labs and the other big concern is is the the pharmacies and I know the minister uh, mentioned this to me as well it's concerning even if they're asymptomatic to reduce the lines uh, a lot of seniors are going into pharmacies do we want asymptomatic people going into pharmacies so there's there's so many uh, items as soon as you do one thing it, it, there's a reaction on the other end and the, that reaction hits another reaction it's they're they're all connected uh, right across the the board Cynthia so we're we're looking at every scenario but we are ramping up uh, uh, for more testing and uh, we're, we're we're ready we're, we're ready to go here follow up Okay, and Premier, do you, sorry, Premier, do you think that uh, the second wave is coming or we're see seeing the beginning of the second wave? And as part of the fall plan, uh, will surgeries be postponed again like we saw at the beginning of phase one? So on the surgeries and, and that, I'll, I'll hand it over to the minister, but is, is it coming? Uh, yeah, I, I believe it's coming, as sure as I'm standing here. And I hope to God I'm, I'm wrong. I'd love to be up here a month later and say I, I was wrong, but it, it's coming. We don't see a, a spike like this uh, so quickly. And I, I really, truly believe, talking to all the chief medical officers, when, once I hear the same story, Cynthia, from, from Ottawa, Toronto, and Peel, all saying the same uh, items, social gatherings, people are letting their guards down, Folks, we, we can't we can't give up now. I'll tell you, and it only takes a small percentage. We like 98 percent, 95 percent of us could be following the procedures. Five percent don't follow it, and uh, I just have to tell you the, the social gatherings uh, they they have to they have to slow down. They they do. But we'll be uh, talking about that this this week. I'll pass it over to the Minister of Health. Hi, Cynthia. We have seen an increase in cases, obviously, over the last short while and a, and a, a disturbing, significant increase today. So whether this is the start of the second wave or not, it certainly has our attention and we are dealing with it. There have been three different uh, types of, of return that have been modeled for us. One is just small surges, small up and down. Others are more peaks and valleys. And the third, uh, the one that is causing us greatest concern, is a sudden very big peak. So we're prepared for for the worst and we are ready for it. We have our fall plan ready to go and we will be rolling that out very shortly. Uh, but we are making plans and we have been uh, getting organized for this for several months now. Uh, in terms of uh, shutting down surgeries and procedures again, 
no, we do not want to do that. We know that many people are very concerned about having had uh, ca uh, cancer surgeries, cardiac surgeries, um, orthopedic surgeries put off. We don't want them to have to go through that again. So that's why our plan does take all of these contingencies into consideration and we are taking a regional approach with respect to um, the, those surgeries and procedures so that we can make sure that even if one hospital has a full capacity due to COVID-19 patients, uh, that we will be able to make sure we can continue on with those surgeries in another hospital. But we will be rolling that out very, very shortly. So thank you. Next question. Your next question comes from Lucas Meyer with News Talk 1010. Please go ahead. Hi, Lucas. Hi, Premier. Thank you very much. Um, on education, uh, the Toronto Catholic School Board told us uh, last week that they were still working on getting improved ventilation uh, for, for some of their schools and classes. Uh, we even heard from a principal who said they were looking at um, air filters on, on Amazon uh, themselves. And I'm just curious, uh, you know, this is you know, months in planning. How is it possible the teachers have been left in a position uh, to do what it sounds like a really brutal option? Well, I'll hand this over to the minister. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lucas. Uh, the, earlier on in the pandemic, uh, we have been working with directors of education, making it well known our expectation that we allocate about $1.4 billion on an annual basis to maintain schools, particularly, for example, for HVAC and airflow systems. Earlier on through this process, school boards uh, conducted a review to understand where the schools with the highest needs, the older schools with older HVAC systems, for example. They prioritize those schools that have uh, been able to see significant improvements to their airflow systems, be it in new HVAC systems on the whole, improvements to air fi uh, filtration systems, or mobile filtration systems that have been procured. Now, the province has unveiled an additional $50 million on top of that $1.4 billion allocation. That $1.4 billion flowed, school boards used it, and they put it to where the highest needs uh, uh, schools are, the older schools that required more of that investment. The $50 million we've unveiled, we made it very clear. We want to see those dollars out the door immediately by Thanksgiving. We've given them the time, a deadline imposed to make sure that that next tranche of schools and additional improvements can be made. And school boards are working very hard to procure as many of these uh, products as humanly possible. And we've seen improvements province-wide. I was in Durham uh, just a few weeks ago meeting with some of the, uh, some of the individuals responsible for HVAC, and they were telling me that in the older schools, all of them received some improvement. Uh, and that's the investment coming from the federal, uh, from the provincial government. So we're going to continue to make air airflow a priority. It's this government that invested an additional 50 million to do that. And we recognize that, you know, in the, certainly in the coming weeks, I've seen many schools be listening to our guidance actually take their classrooms outside. Just a few days ago, I was in Niagara region with uh, the parliamentary assistant with Sam Ustrov, and we saw, we met educators and principals, and they brought their classrooms outdoors. That experiential learning, which is really making a difference, I know parents appreciate. So we'll continue to work with school boards to improve airflow problems wide. Follow up? Thank you very much. And on the health side, um, Windsor's Public Health Unit put out a really great graphic not too long ago of how 31 people got COVID. It shows from a Tim Hortons to a card game to a swimming party, et cetera. And um, it was just so illustrative of how this happens. And I'm just wondering if the government is working on some sort of way of doing this at the provincial level, going further than just necessarily an anecdote from a wedding that led to 60 cases or something like that, but being able to show it on a chart, you know, it started here, spread here, et cetera. Is that something the province can work on and do? I've already requested that. I'm, I'm all over it. Uh, color coding, I'm a strong believer. You can't manage unless you measure it. They are measuring it. I, I know... Uh, uh, Dr. Dirk, as we as we call him, uh, he, he's working on it because he's a strong believer in in measuring as as well. And uh, Ontario Health and Chief Medical Officers, that's the first thing I ask, where they're coming from. I, we need to see the graphs, so the the graphs are being prepared. Uh, I'd be more than happy to make those uh, public as as well. As soon as I get them, the people will will see them, and I'll I'll bring them out. But uh, it's absolutely critical throughout this whole process. Uh, is that we measure it. You can't manage unless you measure, and uh, we're measuring. So I'll pass it over to the Minister of Health. Thank you. 
Well, it is something that we need to continue to follow because we are seeing uh, more community transmission and so we need to understand how to trace it and uh, it, this is a very communicable uh, disease and so that's why we're asking people to follow the public health guidelines, to follow the rules re with respect to the size of gatherings and generally please be careful because it's, we're not through this yet. COVID is still with us until we have a vaccine. I know that there's a lot of COVID fatigue out there, but please just keep doing this. It's to get us through this potential second wave. It's not forever, but it is really important that we all continue to follow these measures. Next question. Your next question comes from Chris Rochelle with the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Hey, Chris. Oh, hi there. Hi, my first question is for you and, and the health minister. Um, I'm just wondering, at what point would you roll back the hotspots, Toronto, Peel, and Ottawa, to stage two? What does the case count have to be before that happens? Well, every, everything uh, is affected, uh, be it the, the economy, be it the schools, and uh, we're, we're, you know, reviewing this very carefully. We're monitoring the, the situation. We've had the conversation with all three chief medical officers, uh, and we're going to be uh, rolling out our our guidelines uh, in days coming, but I, I will pass it over to the Minister of Health. Well, we don't want to have to move things back a stage, back into stage two, because that's, uh, first of all, it's people have worked so hard to get us to this point. If we have to, though, we will, but we need to continue to um, understand what's happening in the different regions. That's why the uh, Premier had the conversation that I was also involved with, with the uh, Chief Medical Officers from, from Peel and Ottawa and Toronto to understand exactly what's going on there. We want to, if possible, to take a more uh, regional approach if we need to do anything rather than step back the entire province. But it's also why we're taking the 28-day period or, or two uh, incubation periods before letting any more businesses come into uh, back into business or to have any other organizations open up because we need to take a pause understand what we're dealing with and take action where necessary. What we don't want to do is worsen the problem. We want to set things back so that people will continue to be safe and healthy. Follow up. Thank you. Um, my question is for the Education Minister. Yeah. Um, I'm still hearing from teachers who have really large classes. Some of them say they have 33 students in their classroom. And I'm just wondering how students can be physically distanced in classes of 33. Um, is this safe? Like, is this something yeah. that should be going on or should boards be um, making these classes a lot smaller? Boards are acting uh, quickly uh, on reducing classroom sizes supported by provincial investment. Over $170 million unlocked, plus the original 30 brings it to $200 million. That alone could hire upwards of 2,000 educators in this province. And we expect every single educator, uh, as noted, to be hired right across the province. We are seeing classroom sizes come down. In Toronto District School Board, as an example, in those higher risk communities that the local public health officer under the leadership of Dr. Davila, working with public health, Dr. Uh, with uh, Dr. Williams at the command table, Minister Elliott, and of course the Ministry of Education, identifying those high risk communities. In those schools, there is an absolute cap from kindergarten to grade three of 15 children in that class. In grades four to eight, it is, uh, it is 20 kids. And of course, in high schools, you know, right across all regions that are designated um, uh, high schools and designated regions in the province, like, for example, York or Peel or Toronto or Durham, the maximum cap is 15. We have reduced classroom size province-wide to ensure distancing. Now, to your point, as parents make their decisions, and our hope is in the next short, short order, they will come to a determination knowing that we've provided them the choice of online and in class, which is a net strength in Ontario. But the point is, while those decisions are made and while we're seeing migration of tens of thousands back and forth, it creates operational challenges for boards. It's not an excuse, but it's important context for, for families to understand that in the absence of knowing the full quantum of kids in the class, school boards are essentially uh, consolidating classes to um, make up for those, those unknown numbers. And until we get the full we get the full clarity of numbers of kids that will be in the class. Schools will then, the school boards will then reconstitute those classrooms, spread them out, hire more educators, and ultimately reduce those classroom sizes. We are seeing that in every school board in the province of Ontario. Under this government, we have invested over $200 million to deliver. 
And remember, we have an additional $380 million set aside, monies that the federal government has provided in January, that will also enable additional investments. Now, in the context of the second wave and an influenza, our government made a decision to set aside $50 million to uh, respond to priorities, be it more distancing, if that is what public health recommends, improved ventilation, any area of need, we have the resources to respond. And again, I just want to re-emphasize the message of the, of the Deputy Premier and the Premier. We have made significant gains that's enabled us to get our kids in school. We've seen over the last week a very orderly restart. We are grateful to everyone for sacrificing, but we have to continue to build momentum to find this curve. Because as Chief Dr. Williams said, the risk within our community will be reflective of the risk in our schools. And so I just urge everyone to do their part uh, to ensure our kids could remain in school. Last question. Your final question comes from Brian Lilly with the Toronto Sun. Please go ahead. Hi, Brian. Hi, Premier. You, I think the, the phrase that you use regularly is you can't manage if you don't measure. So yes. a couple of people have asked and you haven't really gotten around to giving us a measurement. What are the metrics that you're looking at to decide uh, that you may consider or may go back to stage two? You said if it doesn't get better. I know we've got 313 cases today, but only 47 in hospital, 17 in ICU. If over the next few weeks that becomes 147 or 247 in hospital, at what point do you say, okay, this region uh, needs to have further public health measures? Is it the hospitalization? Is it the case count? Is it ICU? What are you looking at? I think it's a combination of, of everything, but uh, again, um, I, I'll always consult with the experts and the Minister of Health and the health team and uh, consistent, uh, you know, spike over a two-week period. It's, it's concerning, but I'll pass this over to the Minister of Health. Thank you. Well, it really is a combination of factors and something that we're all keeping our, um, our attention attuned to, especially the Chief Medical Officer of Health and the Public Health Measures Table, all of the people who are advising us who are specialists in public health. So it is going to depend on the number of new cases, the hospitalizations, the number of people on ventilators, all of those things come into play, but it's definitely in terms of seeing a significant trend uh, coming forward. Uh, we're not there yet, but the numbers are increasing and that's why it is so important for all of us to continue to follow those public health measures because that is the best prevention that we have against COVID-19. Follow-up? The, uh, the numbers that we've seen over the past few days, it's consistently over 50% of cases are now between uh, 20 and 39. Uh, there's only been eight cases over the last two days in, in long-term care residents. Yeah. Um, do you have to keep being a premier dad and, and lecturing people to, uh, to get them to wash their hands and, and not do parties? Is that what you think it's going to take? You know, Brian, I, I hear you, man. I'll tell you, it drives me crazy. You, 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 I'm up here like a preacher telling people every single day, don't let your guard down, don't let your guard down. And, and be very frank, majority of the people are following the protocols. It only takes a small group, and then it just starts going like a wildfire right across the board. But I'm not going to... Uh, stop telling people to continue to wash your hands and face masks and social distance because I we just I, I knew this was going to start creeping up again and we've been talking about the second wave we aren't in a full-blown uh, second wave and we can get our hands around it we can uh, slow the the spread as as the uh, doctor uh, I believe is Dr. Davila uh, was saying this morning it's within our grasp if if we all just follow those protocols and and and, and when all three docs from different areas are telling me social gatherings are the biggest problem, uh, folks, they, these have to stop. It's you know, they, they just have to stop. Bottom bottom line, and we'll be coming out to discuss that uh, further uh, this week, Brian. But we'll we'll do everything we can to monitor, and I'll I'll be premier dad, premier granddad, premier anyone. I just want these uh, these folks not to have reckless parties. That's what it comes down to, and. I do, uh, wrapping up there? Yep. Okay, so I just, I want to give a shout out to my son-in-law, uh, Dave. He's one of Toronto's finest. Uh, Dave, my heart and prayers go out to you and Krista and, 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 and Terry, that uh, as Dave lost his dad to the fight of cancer last night at 8.30 last night. So our prayers and, and thoughts are with you, buddy. You stay strong. Okay, thank, thank you, and God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you.